Media is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris, think outside. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 55 years. Tough, smart, capable. With everything going on this snowmobile season, having a project to work on all winter long has been a good thing. For us at STV, we just haven't been able to go to all the destinations that we normally would have, but I still had to produce a show, so the Mach Z has become a bigger part of this season's series than I originally anticipated. Working on this thing, though, has been a lot of fun, especially chasing Rich on that exquisite XCR Polaris of his, trying to get this thing to go faster than it, has been a good challenge. I acquired this sled from a friend who had it and another basket KZ for sale. And once I got the whole mess back to the shop, it didn't take long for the nickname Scuzzy to take hold. This sled has been sitting for a few years because of an issue with the engine, so it was pretty dirty from being parked. However, despite the dirt and over 12,000 miles on the odometer, it was all there. It turned out the engine problem was a munch stator that was dragging on the inside of the flywheel. And once I got that changed out, the Scuzzy rumbled to life. And then it was buzzing around the back 40 that I was inspired to create a radar run exclusively for old triple sleds. It was about halfway through this season when we took this sled, my old 650 Indy, an 02 Yamaha SRX, a 98 TCAT, and a beautiful 03 XCR out to our super secret white lake of icy flat frozen awesomeness to run each one of the sleds on the radar gun. It was almost a perfect day on the ice with the old iron, but as you might remember, the Mach Z almost immediately started to shed the track out of the back of it, so its day was done before we even got started. Rich, though, on the other hand, with that exquisite XCR 800 of his, well, he won the day with a 107 mile an hour pass. Since then, we did another show where I put a bunch more parts into the old Mach that included clutch rebuilds for both the primary and secondary, some new bearings in the skid frame, and I fixed a broken spring bracket in there. I also installed V-Force reeds into the engine, and I installed a new-to-me track along with a bunch more woody studs for traction. We then took the sled back out to the ice and ran 101 miles an hour on the gun. Then off camera, I fiddled with the TRA clutch a little bit and found another mile an hour to top out at 102 which was pretty much what Don on his TCAT were doing for most of the day, and Rich on that XCR as well. You know, the more I think about it, and that one pass Rich made at 107 miles an hour, well, he only did that once, and I never saw the gun. Now, I'm not calling him out on it, but it does kind of sound like something that came out of the south end of a northbound face and bull. That's fine, though. It's okay. I'm fine with it. I was given the number of 107 miles an hour to beat, and that's the number I'm trying to beat with the scuzz. This means I still have to find five miles an hour out of this old chassis to beat my 107 mile an hour target. With this being our last show of the season, this is also my last chance to do it on camera, so I've gathered up some more parts to hopefully push this old blister past the goal. There we go. So here's my new list, not to be confused with the old list. The new list starts with a new to me track and the reason we're changing the track on this thing is because the last new to me track that we installed on the SCSI, well, it started shedding studs almost immediately on the ice. So I want to change that out before it fires one through a heat exchanger and ends our day. We're also going to install 96 new woody studs in it too, just for enough traction to get down the ice. After that, we're going to clean the carbs because right now the SCSI is not happy. It's running really bad, but part of that problem is not only the carbs, I also think it's the old fuel in this thing because I haven't even put gas in this thing yet. I'm still rocking the fuel that I got when I bought the sled. And keep in mind, this thing hasn't run for three years, so it's going to get a carb clean and fresh gas. And because nothing is too good for the SCSI, we're going to throw on a new drive belt too. After that, we're going to change the brake fluid because after a pass or two down the ice, that old brake fluid gets so hot and starts to boil and your brakes fade away to nothing. Don't really need brakes for a radar run, but it is a little spooky going that fast knowing you have no brakes at all. So we're gonna change the brake fluid. After that, we're gonna lift the suspension back up because since we've been to the ice, there's been a lot of top water come in and it's got a significant hump in the middle at probably the 80, 85 mile an hour mark. So I want enough suspension on the SCSI to be able to deal with that little heave that's in there. 
Last is down here, new piston rings because the compression on the SCSI is uh, not good. The only problem with these new piston rings is I don't have them in my possession in the shop yet. So I'm really hoping the courier shows up before we got to go to the ice. So that is a lot of wrenching to get done by the end of the week when we're scheduled to be back on the ice. And if we don't get back to the ice, we're going to lose the shop. Actually, no, we're not really going to lose the shop, but I am on deadline to get the show done, so I don't really have a whole lot of time to waste unless I have a good reason to waste time. And here's my reason. On social media, a lot of you are asking for the sound of these old triples running. So before we get to wrenching, we're going to play some sound clips of these old sleds just ripping it down the ice. This will be like bacon for your ears. Sorry, I got carried away with all those sled sounds with a V8 here in the shop. Anyways, coming up after the break, we start wrenching on the SCSI. STV is brought to you by Motovan, for the love of power sports. With the big day coming, the first job we're going to do on the SCSI is replace the track, which is one of the most involved jobs you can do on a snowmobile. but. It's just labor intensive, it's really not that bad. You will need a key tool though, and that's an impact wrench to break the bolts loose holding the rear suspension in place. After that, you can use some luxury items like maybe a snowmobile lift will make the job go easier, and if you can arrange it, try to do the work in a heated shop because this job is going to take a couple of hours, and you don't want to do that in the cold. Step one usually begins by removing the rear suspension, but if your track is garbage like this one, you can skip ahead to the track removal part right away. There is something just satisfying about cutting your track off. Now doing this actually helps get it out of the way for when you're dealing with the drive axle a little later on in about step, I don't know, 47 or so. Now obviously don't cut your track off if you plan on reusing this thing, but really, if I have to tell you this, then maybe you're better off taking this job to a professional. Back to step number one, which is the removal of the rear suspension. This is where the impact really helps out to remove the four bolts holding the arms in place. Trying to do this with just a ratchet never really works out. You need the speed and hammer action to break both sides loose on the pivot shafts. At this point, without the track in the way, everything comes out easy. If the track is still in there, you'll have to shorten up the rear axle as much as you can and then fight with everything a bit to get the suspension out. It actually tells you that in the snowmobile repair manual, you will have to fight with this job. Well, actually, it doesn't really say that, but you're going to have to fight with this job. Next, start digging in the engine bay by removing everything in the way of getting the side cover off the chain case. This normally involves removing the exhaust, which is something I'm getting really good at on the old SCUS here. With the muffler out, I'm going to undo the chain case cover and just let whatever oil's in there go everywhere because there's no drain in this case. If yours does have a drain though, do that before the cover comes off. It's way less messy. I've also got to get the mechanical reverser out of the way. Now there's lots of gears and springs and shafts and spacers in here, so be sure to make note of how that stuff came out for when it has to go back in. Now the brake caliper has to be unbolted as well because the whole chain case on this chassis has to come out, which actually isn't too hard to do. And with everything undone, it'll all come out in one piece. The next step is to remove the secondary to get access to the drive shaft bearing on this side. Now, there's usually a speedometer housing to deal with here and a little drive pin on the inside that gets lost super easy, so keep that in mind. With the track previously removed, you can now get under there and pull out the drive axle. Again, this usually involves a little fight if the track is still wrapped around it, and it's especially fun dealing with a studded track too. So at this point, we're about halfway through this project, but before we get to reassembly, I want to tell you about the new-to-me track that I've got. 
I picked this bad boy up used from JT Power Sports, and I think it came off an Articat at one point, but it doesn't really matter because it's still a 121 inch track with a 252 pitch. Now the pitch refers to the distance between the lugs, but also the drives, which is exactly the same for the SCSI, so this thing's gonna go on there just fine. It's also got a really short lug on it, which is good for speed, but it's also gonna work with those studs I'm gonna recover out of that other track. Removing old studs out of an old track is not a fun job and I wouldn't recommend it. However, if you're trying to recover studs that are in good shape out of a track that's say gotten ripped or torn on something, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. What I would do is make sure the nylon locking ring inside your nylock nut is in good shape. Otherwise, just throw a new nut on it when you go to reassemble them. For this old track, I'm planning on reusing as many of the same holes as possible, but there's two pull throughs on this track that I'm not gonna reinstall studs in. If you feel the need, you can drill another hole next to the pull through as long as the track isn't torn to reinstall a replacement stud in that bar. Personally though, I wouldn't be drilling a new hole too close to a stud that's been pulled through a track. Instead, I would just live with a hole in my pattern. And speaking of patterns, whoever installed the studs on this track didn't have one. Now they were trying for a 48 stud pattern, which is two studs every other bar. And for the most part, it worked out except for, well, here and here. Not really a problem unless your OCD is getting to you, but there is a two-part solution to make sure your pattern works out. And the first part of that solution is getting yourself a studding template like this one from Woody's. These patterns are available for all track lengths and pitches and will lay out multiple different stud patterns depending on how many studs you want to install and what kind of traction you're looking for. The next part of the solution is marking your track out before you drill it. That way, if for some reason the pattern doesn't work out, you can simply remark it. Whoever laid out the studs in this one started drilling right away and ultimately had to live with the result. With all the studs taken out of this old cat track, I'm gonna lay out a new pattern that works with as many of the old holes as possible, but that means I can't use a Woody's template. Now I'm still gonna install two studs per bar all up the middle for a total of 96, which I'm hoping will be a good balance between grip and speed. With the last track on the SCSI, I had about 180 some odd studs in this thing, which was a lot of grip, but it was also a lot of weight. Now, the weight definitely killed my top end, so I'm hoping this time with only 96 studs in this track, there'll be enough grip to keep that monster hooked up at the big end. If this was a drag race situation over a short distance, more studs would definitely be better, like a 192 pattern, which is four studs per bar, helping it hook up for ultimate grip. On the other end of the scale is just enough studs to keep the sled under control on icy trail conditions. And depending on the pitch of the track, this usually works out to around 50 or so. To show the difference between a machine with studs and without, we took a pair of snowmobiles out to the ice to really demonstrate how a studded snowmobile is much more controllable. Showing the benefits of studding for performance gains is pretty simple, but adding studs to the track of your machine really does add predictability to your snowmobiling experience. Let's face it, going down the trail, you can't always spot that icy patch that's coming up in front of you. And if the rear of your sled suddenly wants to swap ends with the front, well, that can end pretty badly. Coming up after the break, I'm gonna be installing this next track into the SCSI. This portion of STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Welcome back. At this point in the show, it's time to get the track and suspension back into the old SCSO back there. But you might notice, there's no studs in this track yet, and the reason for that is a simple one. New studs are sharp, and they stick into your hands, and they rip your pants when you're trying to wrestle everything back into the snowmobile. So I'm going to wait for all this stuff to get back in there before I drill and install the new studs. All right, so the rear suspension and the tracks are installed on this thing. Probably the two jobs I hate doing most on a snowmobile, but they're done. Right now though, for a break, I'm gonna work on the front suspension and then I'm gonna go to the carbs before I stud the track. And it's all gonna get done today. With the suspension back up in the air, I'll feel much better heading down the ice with the big heave in the middle of the track. I don't mind going on a sketchy ride, but I do know my limit. Up next is the carburetors. Carb problems can be a major issue for old sleds, especially with today's fuel that seems to go bad right before your eyes, gumming up and plugging the small passages inside the carbs. These are what's called rack style carbs, meaning they're all mounted together on a rack so the whole thing gets removed in one big assembly. 
Now I've taken the throttle cable off, but left the enrichment cable on because it just seemed easier this way. Now looking inside these things, they're pretty clean, so I'm not taking them all the way apart, but I did find a couple of problems with the Pilot Jets. Two of them were plugged up solid, even though these carbs were clean when I opened them up. Now for the rest of it, I'm just using some carb cleaner to clean out the different orifices and then a little bit of compressed air to make sure they're blown out. One thing to be careful of though, whenever you go into carburetors, double check your main jet because these things can be different from one cylinder to another and if you screw them up going back in, you could end up burning your engine down. With the carbs assembled and reinstalled in the chassis, I'm going to move on to the brakes. Brake fluid has a tendency to pull in water from the atmosphere, that's why they're sealed up the way they are. Any water in the system lowers the boiling point of the fluid and causes brake fade. Then over time the fluid just gets old and contaminated anyways. I'm assuming the stuff in the SCSI is original and replacing it with new good stuff should keep the brakes from fading away out on the track. And I know what you're going to say, what do you need brakes for anyways? They just slow you down. Basically what I'm trying to do here is put new fluid up in the reservoir and pump that new stuff through the whole system into the caliper. And basically it just changes the fluid out. You can tell the old stuff is kind of nasty and rusty and all milky in there, but it's starting to get clear in the tube. When it comes out nice and clear, you know you're good. One thing to be careful of though is don't ever run the reservoir out of fluid. With that job done, I'm going to move on to finishing up the installation of the studs in the track. 98 shouldn't take long, especially with half the holes already drilled. Now it's too late to change my mind, but installing these newer studs on an old track, and by the way, did I mention it, it was off a 98 Articat ZL500? That makes this track 23 years old? Anyways, I wouldn't recommend doing this. I'm surprised at how loose these old holes are, and if there was any big miles ahead for this track, I don't think the studs would last long before they would start coming out. <laughs> Good thing I'm only planning on doing top speed runs, otherwise what could possibly go wrong? What this means is I'm probably in for at least one more remove and reinstall of a track on the SCSI. Yeah, I'm definitely not looking forward to that. Well, we only got a couple of things to wrap up on the SCSI here before we head to the ice. And my next job is going to be installing pipes. But you might be wondering, why am I installing pipes now? What about the piston rings? Well, we've had a fail there. They never showed up to the shop and got a call and said that the parts are on back order. Go figure. Parts for an old sled are hard to come by this year. Strange. After the pipes are installed back in the chassis, I'll have one more quick look at those carbide runners. They may have to be good enough for one more day at the track because I'm getting antsy to squeeze the trigger on this sled. Still not sure though if it has 107 miles an hour in it, but I'm definitely curious to know what it'll run. Which is gonna happen when we head to the ice right after the break. Closed captioning is brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Well, we finally made it back here to the ice for the last segment of the last show of the 2020-2021 season of Snowmobiler Television. And this is also my last shot at Radar Run Glory when the Mach Z that I've nicknamed the SCSI goes down that track at 107, actually 108 miles an hour, it would be even better. But I'm not sure if this pile is gonna do it. And if it doesn't, I'm totally blaming those piston rings that never showed up. I've already spent some time prepping the track with a tractor and blower, but it's not quite as nice as it was earlier this season. Keeping ahead of the snow and drifting is a bit of challenge and the track has gotten a little smaller, but I've kept the length though, cause I'm certain the old SCSI is gonna need every inch to beat that XCR of riches. I've got a little bit of time here before the sun sets, so I'm gonna do a couple of passes just to make sure everything's okay with the sled and that the suspension's working over the rough section and that my brakes stay alive. Now, the last time I was on the ice here, this thing did 102 miles an hour, but that was with the heavy track and all those studs. This new track with the fewer amount of studs, I just don't know if there's going to be another five or six miles an hour in this thing. I'm really curious to find out. I just hope this thing is going to stay together long enough to make a fast pass. At this point here on the ice, about the only thing I can adjust is the TRA clutch. Other than that, this is basically a run what you brung type of scenario. So far on my warm-up passes, things are looking good. Nothing's leaking more than usual under the hood and the sparkulators seem to be making lightning. So I think it's time to make a real pass.
that, man. I felt fast. 103 mile an hour. 103? 103. It's not bad. That's one extra mile an hour from where it was before. You know, you know there's, there's one other thing I can do. I got one other trick up my sleeve. You guys, stay here. I'll be right back. What other thing can he possibly have up his sleeve? I don't know. He always has something up his sleeve. mile an hour that felt faster 108 mile an hour 108 mile an hour yeah if you can't beat them join them <laughs> 108 although I had to do it on an XCR oh well <laughs> well that's it for another season of snowmobiler television on behalf of myself and the crew here at STV, I want to thank all of you who tuned in all season long watching us on television and social media. Without you folks, we couldn't do what we do. Now, summer is just around the corner, but so is fall and winter, and that means we'll see you next season. STV is brought to you by CKX, wear your passion. Schaefer's, specialized lubricants since 1839. Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Ready to get away? 